Welcome to the Renewing the Mind podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Sanchez. Joined with me, as always, my dad, Dr. Raul Sanchez. How you doing, dad? I'm feeling amazing. Just like back in the day at NDSU, we had a saying that goes like this. Those who stay will play. Those who play will be champions. Once a champion, always a champion, baby. There should be right there. Mwah. It's been a while. And there's the ring kiss. There we go, baby. This, there we go. On this, on this podcast, we teach you how to renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty, and find what's awesome about that in every situation. And never forget it. There's two times to be great when you feel like it and when you don't. Yes, sir. Two times to be great. Always. And you're watching two on, times to feel your feelings. If you're watching on <laughs> Facebook, Give us a like, share the video. If you're watching on YouTube, click that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell that we get notified when we launch new content. If you're listening to the podcast, anywhere you consume podcasts, if you would leave us a review, that would help us out a lot. Today, we are hopping right into this. The purpose of feelings. What does that mean? What does that look like? I know growing up, um, feelings took on a whole different meaning than they do today and some of that awareness is really good. And I think some of that awareness is bad. And um, so we're going to talk about what it means to the purpose of feelings. How do you feel your feelings? What do feelings do? How do they lead you, guide you? We're going to try to dive into all of that and wrap it up with a bow in 30 minutes. We're really trying to shoot for that 30 minute time slot. So let's waste no time and hop into this. Talk to us about the purpose of feelings. Yeah. So there are several purposes of feelings, but here's, I'm just going to start with the story. And this, this is based off a book, the purpose of feelings. And it's basically the covers, see all the faces you see that we posted up here. So that's actually a book called the purpose of your feelings and feeling your feelings. But here's a cool story that they talk about and it's based toward kids, but actually it's role plays. So adults can learn too. It's pretty, pretty interesting concept. Here's the concept. What if you're feeling really panicked because you look outside and you see a bunch of smoke? And what if there's a dude knocking on the door and he actually says in a suit, like, hi, I'm scared, please open the door. And so you look out, you get scared because you see scared and then you panic. And the concept is this, the longer you wait, the sooner your actual fear is going to hit you in the face because scared is going to seep through the windows, seep through the door. Pretty soon you're on fire. Now you have to open the door and run through fire. So the basic issue is move toward scare. And so what they're telling us to do is identify your feeling and move towards it. And if you've been with us for any length of time, you know that we always talk about feel your feelings even before the book came out and specifically nurture first. And then our three pillars are renew your perspective, move toward the uncertainty, and then find what's awesome about that struggle, find what's awesome about that pain. And so in this story, they continue and they say, okay, you back to the thing where you see smoke outside, you kind of panic. You're about to open the door. You see this person come up to the door. Basically it's fire, but it's the person that says scared. And now you're like, Hey dad, what should I do? And you know, your mom or dad says, Hey, let's open the door and see what's going on. You open the door and you see fire coming towards you. So now you have an exit route and you don't have to run through the pain. And so the, the idea here is this, the earlier I identify my feelings, the more options I have. And what the world wants you to believe is hide from your feelings, ignore your feelings, like feelings don't exist, you know, or they'll go away or they'll go away. Right. And so here's the concept, like when, and people get it wrong, they'll say like, they don't like the two times thing because it says I'm ignoring feelings. And that's not the key. That's not the key. The key is there's two times to be great when you feel like it and when you don't, but see, when I don't feel like it, I still have time, right? I can go to the, I don't feel like it. Well, let me just put on my clothes real quick and let me just. Maybe I'll go get a coffee. And then while now I'm out, I might as well go to the gym. It kind of works like that. Okay. Yep. But, but here's the biggest issue. I want you to think about something. Um, is it possible to be able to separate out fear from anger? The answer is yes. And who can do that? And the answer is people with feelings, wisdom. So they have a lot of wisdom on how much they feel. So like a psychologist, for example, or let's say, you know, an executive coach, or let's say yep. a pastor, right. Or a teacher. Somebody who's dealing with a lot of people through a lot of feelings, they have some wisdom about feelings. Okay. How about another one? Is it possible to distinguish between disappointment and sadness? And the answer is yes. Okay. Now, how about this? What if I told you like feelings actually help you work through your confusion? I'll give you an example. What if you get invited to a gig, a party, an event, 
And just by getting the invite alone, you have this panic feeling and you're upset slash angry, right? Maybe, maybe you're burned out. Maybe you don't have time. Maybe this is somebody you can't say no to. Maybe it's like a boss and you're like, oh no, how do I say no? Mm. And conversely, what if you get invited to an event and all your buddies, I'm sorry, what if you, what if all your buddies get invited to an event and then they text you like, dude, this is going to be epic. And then you look at the list, you're not on the list, but low key, you're totally jacked. <laughs> you're like, yes, I didn't make Thank the goodness. list. Yeah. 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 So, and this is where it's all kind of confusing. You think if I get invited, I'm in, but what if it doesn't work like that? Okay. So the whole purpose of what we're going to talk about today is how do we feel our feelings? And the answer is we have to identify the purpose or the function of our feelings. Okay. The purpose or the function. So here's a few purpose uh, pieces. So number one, feelings give us directionality like a compass, right? Feelings don't tell me a whole lot about me yet. They just tell me what direction I'm going. Like I'm going Southwest. Like, I don't know why, but my heart's racing and I'm feeling really angry right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, another one. So what about, uh, I'm feeling unsafe. So a purpose of feelings is I'm feeling unsafe. So it's a safety regulator. And that's what everybody knows because that's the fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. The third one is incongruence. We talk about this a lot. There's a lot of information in science coming about the mind body congruence. We know that because the Bible talks about it, but also it's in the science now. And people talk about how you're incongruent, like your mind might be ahead of your, you know, your stomach or something. And you join some really cool event and you're in college and you agree to pay for like a, you know, $60 steak and it's 36 ounces and you already bet your friends that you can do it. And you actually don't have the 75 bucks to pay for the steak. So you just force yourself to eat the steak. Like, hypothetically speaking I, I mean just you know speaking for a friend <laughs> so you're like oh dude what did i do <laughs> so it looks like your head and body aren't in the same in the same piece um and then the last one i like this one a lot because this is what i deal with a lot with i you focus on teenagers like their expectations are wrecked so one of the purposes is to direct your expectation so they'll be like oh i had no clue that was going to go like that or man that was a shock i had no idea i totally didn't expect that Okay. And, and if you think about just that last one, if you took up my wife and I, when we watch a movie, if there's a plot twist inside a plot twist, I'm so happy. I'm like, man, that is so worth my money. And it ended like randomly. And you just like, it leaves you thinking, man, th that should be a, there should be a sequel. I'm excited. And my wife is mad. And right. if it, it, if it ends with a predictable ending, like there's a happily ever after and two people walk, you know, down the street, holding hands down the middle of the road. Uh, and they leave nothing to imagination. My wife is super excited and wants to go out for ice cream. And I'm like, no, I'm yeah. gonna go work out. Cause like I'm frustrated. <laughs> so, so those are some, some, uh, specific purposes of feelings. Okay. And now if we work toward the function side and then we'll circle back and look at a bunch of stories. But if we, if we look at the function side, one of the functions is feelings drive your action. Okay. Feelings drive your action. So if I'm really upset, and I'm wounded, I might just say, forget it, I'm not going. Something came up, quote unquote, something came up and I might just go to bed. So it drives my action, okay? Now feelings also, if I've pushed into the purpose, if I've opened the door to, you know, scared, for example, and I've pushed into the pain, I've moved toward uncertainty, what happens is I start to develop wisdom. So now I know like there's shades of fear, okay? And I know there's like shock in there. So maybe it's not fear, it's shock. Once the shock wears off, I'm okay. So wisdom comes as a function of moving into feelings. Okay. A one that I work with a lot because I coach CEOs is a one function of managing and developing and moving towards your feelings is work-life balance. Um, and that, that it's such an amazing piece. Um, and I'll give you a quick story. Uh, um, a person I'm working with took his kids out to ice cream on a Friday, picked them up after school and went to ice cream. And at the end of the ice cream, uh, they were at a stoplight. And, uh, you know, the teenager in the back seat yelled to the daughter in the front seat. And um, I'll just use our daughter's name and says, hey, Valencia, you're super lucky. Dad never took me out, you know, uh, picked me up from school and took me to ice cream. And then uh, I think a little bit of wisdom there. The teenager kind of understood that and then slapped dad on the arm and says, hey, even though it looks like you're lazy and you get off work early a lot, I like it. <laughs> so then uh, when I talked to this guy, he, he, uh, shares that story with me and he literally like his eyes were watering and he's yeah. like, 
dude, this is, this is, he's like, I don't even, I can't explain it. You know, another guy told me, he's like, I feel accomplished when kids say important things like that, like the big wins. And, and that's basically pushing into feelings. Like my kids don't want anything to do with me. So I don't come home early. See, that's just not, open, you're not opening the door to the scared, right? right? Once you open the door to the scared, you're like, well, I mean, I tried to take them to the movie and that was a bomb. So right. I took them out to a restaurant uh, that they didn't like that. They didn't have the mac and cheese they wanted. So I took them out to ice cream and then we had this epic idea, you know? Well, e even in that one story, there's so many other things too. Like number one, just because you didn't do it for the firstborn, it's never too late to start. I mean, right. th there's all those f feelings, you know, th that that's a feeling of maybe regret or shame, or I didn't do it for five years. So why start now? All those yeah. things. Yeah. And, and this is the whole idea of us working with people at any level. You could be a coach, you could be a speaker, you could be an author, you could be a pastor. Um, and, you know, in that awareness of like, wow, um, yeah, so I kind of missed it on the 14 year old. You know, I said, hey, when my son mentioned that to my kids, my oldest son, he was a freshman in college. So like he was 18, maybe 19. Uh -huh. and, yeah, I mean, no, uh -huh. man, hi hypothetically speaking, like, uh -huh. you know, I mean, if I had a kid who came home <laughs> freshman year of college, you'd be like, uh -huh. why is the table set for another person? And, you know, <laughs> Dave and Terrence like, were like, Terrence, Dad, Dave, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Oh, it's our normal Thursday night Buffalo Wild Wings. Huh? <laughs> Thursday night uh, Buffalo Wild Wings? And then you're like, <laughs> since when does dad come home for dinner? What? What, what in the yeah. world is going on here? And this is, this is the whole entire thing. It is so easy to feel that pain or to feel that embarrassment or to feel that disgust or to feel shame. And then just to like leave the door shut and then, then wait until all your kids are gone and now you're empty nesters and now no one wants to come home. See that pain's worse because I'm pinned and I have no escape route now. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it's worse because it's, it's, it's down the road. I don't have to deal with it right now. I, I'll deal with that later. Where if I if I feel like my kids don't like me or they're angry at me or frustrated at me to to come home, um, I have to immediately. The first couple questions are, "Why are you home? What are you doing? You never yeah. come home. You never are around. You're." It's an immediate. It's an immediate confrontation rather than down the road 10, 20 years. Yeah. Right. Right. And so my so it my, feels easier. It feels easier. And my you know my coach Christopher Kai he was up here. We did our conference and stuff. He calls me the hurt doctor. <laughs> <laughs> because he uh, he bruised his arm shooting archery but he fell in love with it honestly so i just didn't give him the arm guard didn't think about it um but he calls me the hurt doctor but i laugh about that because there's two angles right so the hurt doctor like i put pain on him on his arm because i didn't teach him correctly the other thing is i'm the hurt doctor because i teach people that pain in the future and i have a lot of people i've worked with who've avoided the pain and then that pain hit now they're divorced and their kids don't come and there's so much more financial serious right. emotion pain and that the small pain of pushing into that scaredness, pushing into that fire, walking out and seeing the smoke coming toward it, consuming your house and you have a couple exit routes, it still is a way better win to feel your feelings, discover the purpose, and then let's consider a function. Well, because in all reality, in all reality, at some point, you have to walk through the fire in that analogy. Yes. At some yes. point, you have to address that you are failing, were failing, or did fail. So it's really, it's really just prolonging the pain. Correct. Yeah. It's almost, and, let's just get it over with now rather than continuing, you know, down the yeah. road and then still, ha you're still going to have to deal with it. It's not like it goes away. Correct. And the, the idea is I like control. I wouldn't say I'm a control freak, but I like control. Uh, you? No, never. <laughs> uh, never. <laughs> uh, you guys used to call me the, the psycho trainer at home, but like, I, I like control. I like, I like to be. I wouldn't say in charge. I, I don't have to be in charge. I'm totally okay with taking notes and being a student, but I like to have an option. Like I, give me options. If you give me options, I'll be your best friend. And so to me, pushing into the pain early gives me eight options. Pushing into the pain after some pro procrastination. Okay. I have four at some point, Back button. Sorry. <laughs> at some point the pain's going to like in consume me. And yes, I'm going to have to push through the fire, but I still not, I'm not in charge then. I don't like that feeling. I grew up that way, you know, single parent, alcoholic father, or my mom, a single parent and an alcoholic stepfather that you, there's pain all the time. You show up and there's police at your door. I mean, yep. there's so much stuff. That's not that about this podcast, but if you just sit there, you're going to eventually have to face the pain with zero control, zero choices. Okay. Does that yep. make sense? Right. Yeah. We got a, yeah. a comment here. We're going to hit. Okay. Um, first of all, this is the dopest mouse in the whole entire world but it has uh back buttons by the thumb and i accidentally went to go click yeah 
I actually went to go click and I hit the back button, so it backed me out of the whole page. Um, all right, let's start. Oh, I thought up. you were just highlighting me because I was talking. I was like, oh, I get no, to I accidentally clicked my second button and it sent me back. <laughs> um, all right, I feel like I can't function with my feelings, and when I have feelings, I can't function. Hard to balance. Perfect, perfect. And that that's the exact idea of like, okay, so if you have the feelings and they overwhelm you, think about like, okay, it fires a great analogy because like if I rush into it, huffing and puffing, and like I work out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smell the smoke, it's gonna make me panic more. So the idea is how can I move into it subtly where I still have some feeling of control? Okay. So now my purpose is then this is gonna drive my action. That's number one. Can I develop wisdom? That's number two. And how is this going to help me balance my work life, which work tends to be just like head down grind. And then the whole balance thing is we're dealing with emotion. It's emotionally heightened intelligence or EIQ, um, you know, understanding like, Hey, I could make money from three to five on a Friday, or I could go spend money and spend time with my kids and have this epic moment. And if you only look at it from the work, the work side, that's financial, like that, that's a no brainer, like stay at work. If you look at it from the emotional side, it's a risk. I could do this, spend this money, spend this time, and there's zero engagement or there's zero, zero appreciation. So what you're saying is sometimes I rush into it and that's really hard. And sometimes I back out and I can't function. And that's really because you haven't identified what's my purpose. Okay. So the first thing I would say, so we'll go back to our, to our purposes. So number one, it's direction. Number two, safety. Number three, incongruence. And then number four is expectation. So when you start to feel that way, ask yourself a question, wait, is my hyperventilating? Is that giving me a direction? Is that making me feel unsafe? Is it telling me I'm incongruent? Like I thought I was a beast at this and I'm not. And the last one is what was my expectation heading here? Okay. So really in all honesty, when feelings catch us, we just simply weren't prepared. Okay. Now, sometimes like, um, you know, Valencia grew up with brothers. And she gets scared a lot. Like when she was a little girl, you'd hear her get scared all the time. My older son's 24 and 21, Terrence and Tavian, they scare each other in the basement. All You hear somebody scream. And so Valencia just growing up with that, she's had this like bad practice of just scaring Stella. And we're trying to get her not to because Stella's not ready for it. And, and she's having a hard time not scaring her or not bumping her or just, you know, and then she tries to say, well, I didn't mean to scare her. And it's, you know, obviously it's Valencia's fault, but, but this is the idea is that caught her off guard. She wasn't prepared. Now, if we say, hey, Stella, Valencia's upstairs, go up there, she'll scare you. She'll say, no, that's stupid. I'm not going to do it. But if we said stuff like, hey, you guys could play tag, and then uh, Stella's chasing Valencia around the house and then reaches around the couch to tag her, and right when Stella touches her, she screams, Stella would probably just say, ha ha, you're it, because she's expecting a surprise. She's expecting to give the surprise. She knows it's coming. She knows it's coming, right? So yep. it's really just a caught off guard thing. Okay, so I want you to go back through those. Uh, this is from Karen. So Karen, I want you to go back through those ideas. Like, is this feeling had given me a direction? Is this feeling giving me safety concerns? Is this feeling telling me I'm incongruent? Like I'm not balanced myself. And last one is, is this telling me that my expectations are off? Now, here's the biggest piece. Once you do that, this, I'll help you break down your inability to function. Once you do that, you have to disengage from the personal attack. Okay. So my daughter's helping me get over this word called idiot. I'm driving and people cut me off. I'll just, I, I wish I could tell you I had a break on it. I don't literally like three idiots come out of my mouth and my daughters, we give each other push ups. So, or, and then she'll tell that, tell me that to, to me, but I can't, I mean, I'm working on it. I promise I'm working on it. <laughs> so personally for me, if I make a mistake, my self-talk is just like, ah, oh, you're an idiot. And I'm trying to stop that because it, my expectation of being perfect or my expectation of, I should have known better. And then I personalize it. I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. Okay. That's what we have to fix. And that goes back to an episode we had about the ants, the automatic negative thoughts. That's such an ingrained thing in my head. I have to work on it. I really do. And it's, it, that really is my word. I just, I don't know. I don't know where it started or where it came from, but I realize now it's like, it's a pain to me because it gets me really frustrated. And now that my daughter catches it, I'm really working on it. So that's what I would tell you, push away the personal feelings or let go of the personalization. So if you mess up, don't say like, oh, I'm an idiot or I'm so stupid or I suck at being a parent, all that stuff, that what's, that's what makes you want to go shut down, can't function, go hide in the bedroom. Okay. Yep. The other thing I would say too is um, th there you have, we all have natural tendencies to um, 
to have certain feelings. So whether yeah. that's uh, immediate negative or immediate sad or immediate um, self-loathing or whatever that look or anger or bitterness, I mean, and, and just like that idiot word comes out all the time, right. it's, it's kind of by default. And so what you have to do is hence renew, renewing the mind. You, you have to figure out a way to, to, to like scripture says, to hold that thought captive right. and then reverse, reverse engineer and reverse train your brain to not fight those emotions. It's going to, it's, it's a process that, you know, like she said, she feels like she can't function with the feeling. So right. you have to understand, okay, take those breaths, sit down, breathe. This feeling is a feeling, you know, it's, that's the purpose of them is to allow us to, to almost embrace the moment. And, you know, in one of our, um, I think it's the YouTube, um, for, um, is it, is it the five stages of grief to, to feel your feelings is one of them yeah. to understand that. Okay. So, so I'm feeling, um, you know, I'm feeling sadness that my grandmother passed away. Cool. Then let's, let's cry for 10 minutes. Let's not cry for all day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if, if, if you're mad that someone cut you off, cool. Be mad for a minute or two. Don't say idiot. And then understand, okay, we didn't crash. We didn't die. You know, we didn't get a fender bender. Now let's move on. It's like, that's what me and Lisa try to talk to the girls about all the time is like, you know, when, when we told Stella, we were making this transition for, from to Siouxland Christian and away from Morningside assembly. Um, you know, she, she was like trying to hold back tears. Yeah. And I was like, Stella, you can cry. And she's like, right. okay. And then, then just, she just started crying. It was like, she yeah. was trying to not, to not feel that. And I was like, let's talk about it. I said, are you sad? Yeah, I'm sad. I'm, I'm upset. I'm kind of mad dad. And like, you know, we, we sometimes do that as adults. We're like, we want to cry. And then we just don't, we're like, no, don't cry. Don't cry. Well, why not cry? You know, or why not be mad or why not? But it's just like, how long are you going to stay there? Correct. That that's that's where I, I think it, we get into some trouble is like you can't be mad all day. You can't hold grudge all day. You can't sit in shame all day. You know, have that moment and then like, you know, move into the direction. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's you know, when we speak about that, the the function of feelings, that's the one where we like number number two where we'll develop. So we're talking about the functions, right? Drive action, develop wisdom, work life balance. Okay. And then that fourth one is channel your energy. So somebody who can channel energy through a feeling has done a lot of work. Unfortunately, the rap on them in society is so like when I use the word resilient, like I'm resilient, the rap against me is like, oh, he just hides his feelings and he just powers through everything. That doesn't mean he's healthy. And people will say just just mean stuff, but they don't really know. I know that I cried in the shower. I know that I wrote down a couple of goals. I know that I actually went downstairs and PR to you know, the weight room. And now I'm like just flying. And that's because I channeled those. I know what it's like to be frozen. I know what it's like to not function. I know what it's like to hide under a porch and hope that your stepdad doesn't find you. I know what it's like to hold those feelings and feel like it's the worst feeling in the world. I also know what it's like to be so ticked off that I can just like punch a hole in the wall and did and beat people up and did. And then you're sitting in, you know, probation in a cell and you're like, okay, that was an idiot thing to do. Okay. So yeah, yeah. There, there's a full circle that you kind of run through as you're opening the door and you're facing scared, it doesn't mean like, Hey, I'm going to be a genius. It means, you know, I'm going to learn how to, uh, I'm going to learn how to, uh, use my action or drive my action. I'm going to learn how to develop wisdom, right? I'm going to develop work life, work life balance, which basically means I know the power of emotion and I develop EIQ. And then that fourth one is I drive my energy into action. So I channel my feelings and those are the people who get my, your why makes you fly over all the garbage, over all the trash, over all the barriers. They get that. They just, they just love it. Uh, it's like when, you know, the coaches were up here, like the why that makes you fly, like Christopher's like, I'm going to steal that, you know? I'm like, it's just, just take it. I mean, it's cool. It's good. You get it. Yeah. I think, I think one, I think, um, I think of two faults when I think of people that feel their feelings or, or are in tune with their feelings. One, I think you just went over, well, you don't have any feelings then, right? And you're a heartless right. person is like the far side of that. Right. I think the other side of it though, too, is if you, if you express too many feelings, I think people call you, you know, an emotional person or you're full of drama or, right. oh, get over it. It's not that big of a deal. You know, like you're, you're just too emotional at some point. So I think there is though a fine balance between, um, <clears throat> you know, scripture talks about that your emotions and your feelings are fleeting. Correct. And so the, the, your heart will, um, Oh, I had it earlier. Basically your, your heart will abandon you or your yeah. heart will betray you. Your feelings Correct. will betray you. And so it's like, you can't also though, 
just function a hundred percent on your feelings. There's definitely a fine balance between swinging to no emotions and also swinging to just chilling in your emotions and letting them determine every single thing possible. That's the whole yeah. point of the two times. Correct is whether your emotions are not. You know, I heard um, why Craig Rochelle says um, exceptional people do just ordinary, normal things or uh, uh, tough things on a regular basis. Yes, correct. And it's you know do exceptional things uh, s on small increments over a long period of time. Right. It's like they they don't do necessarily all this crazy stuff. It's like just ride your emotions on a nice fine line between not overbalanced and not over emotional, but not but feeling them and allowing them. There's got to there's got to be a little balance there though. Yeah, that's correct. And the Bible says your heart is desperately sick, which means it always wants to set self protect. Yeah. It, it it is it will fail you like a thermostat. It is stuck on self protection. So if I hide behind my feelings, <clears throat> my heart will guard me. It'll protect me. But it doesn't protect me from pain. It protects me from growing. And that's the key between people who are like too drama, you know, over overly dramatic and not. Um, OK, yep. so uh, so let's move into a brain hack. So here's a cool, cool brain hack. Like and this research is brand new. So um, so there's some research about um, uh, autism, schizophrenia and um, what's the other one? Parkinson's disease. And basically these are these are neurological disorders where people are deficient in dopamine. Okay. So some research just came out It's brand new. It's 2022 stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. So in the journal of neuroscience. So, okay. So dopamine, just to remember, they call it the happy, uh, hormone because it motivates you. It doesn't produce happiness. It produces motivation. So dopamine is a neurochemical that produces dopamine. I'm sorry. Dopamine is a neuro neurochemical that produces motivation. And by getting more things done, then I'm more happy. Okay. So dopamine is a chemical messenger that makes my cells move. I get things done. Therefore I, I'm happy. Okay. So, um, they, they've noticed a link between people who are deficient in dopamine. So that's ADHD, that's Parkinson's, that's schizophrenia, that's bipolar, that's anxiety, that's depression. Um, and the journal of neuroscience listed a few more, but, but those are the big ones I just wanted to mention. So you're just deficient in dopamine, which means you don't produce enough of it when you need it. It just kind of floats around. So think of dopamine like the wind. It kind of ebbs and flows. Okay, so here's a yep. cool brain hack. They they gave medication that increased dopamine, and they found two things. People who were deficient in dopamine could recognize facial emotions way better, and their social skills improved. So when you go from low or, or depleted to average, you actually get better social skills, and you can recognize facial expressions of emotion on others' faces a lot faster. Okay. which is huge because we know a lot of people with, you know, who struggle with emotional disorders, their social skills crash. Okay. Now we know there's a dopamine link. Okay. So here's the other thing. If your dopamine levels were actually average to above average and you got a medicine, you clicked so fast that your social skills dropped and your ability to recognize faces dropped. And those are the people I think this is just what I think there's, there's no, no research on it yet, but just how my mind thinks about it is those are the dudes who frustrate you because they're just flying. So you're like, okay, so what happened was, is, you know, they're too up, intense. Yeah. Like uh, what happened was I set my alarm. I woke up, I was already 20 minutes late. And then I go out to start my car and I must let the dome light on and they go, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to go. I can't take this. And they hang up on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that dude's like way up here. Or that lady's so, way so up how, here. So how do we, what, what do give us one or two things to increase dopamine that for us to help help that out bro you think i got answers yeah that's I mean, the point of this <laughs> yeah so the, okay give, so, give us one or two we got a comment and then let's end this thing okay so number one medication right so that's that's an easy one you have to go to your doctor and you say hey i have this condition and they get you know, can get you tested and they can give you some more dopamine okay number two is nutrition we can look up some foods that are really high in dopamine like nuts for example um you know and then you can actually increase your dopamine Okay, the two biggest hacks that people are going to be wanting to jump on, if those aren't you, uh, the next one is cognition. So cognition is the ability to have working memory. So I have a program that I teach. I've been teaching it since like 2006 called CogMed Working Memory Training. So working memory is the ability to stretch how much you hold in your, in your memory. So hold a lot of information. And then while you're holding it, manipulate the pieces. Okay. okay. 
So that's just in your head. So working memory is a really cool proxy measurement for how much dopamine you have. High dopamine, you can do a lot of mental tasks. Low dopamine, you need a pin or a calculator and you just like get really flustered. People start telling you a number and you're like, ah, you're making me, I'm getting overwhelmed. Let me okay. write it down. Yeah, so that's a sign like your dopamine's off, okay? Let so, me guess the last one. You already know, baby, there's two times. <laughs> working out <laughs> there's two times baby there's two times i promise you actually i knew it was coming i just created from the lord that's why elijah uh, ran, ran three hundred miles. okay okay so let me go back so so you can i want a button that says, it does that but it says workout yeah bah, 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 bah. um i love it okay so here's the idea so um so you could go on to just the app store and you can type in brain games. You can type in working memory as like a as like a title. Some of those things are pretty cheap. Like those are like free ones. Those are free ones. You don't have to hire a psychologist, a professional coach. You can download some of those. And wasn't like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do a, some, if you do some of those, and you and you just practice. Let, let's say it's five ninety nine a month or something. Pay the money, do it. Hop on your iPad and train every day like like it's your coach. And you could stretch your working memory. And I promise you, these kids I work with with working memory. They can cut down a little bit of dose on their on their ADHD meds because their working memory helps push dopamine. If so, they want to look up the cogmed uh, area, what do they do? Just go to your website, uh, so or they they can actually just go to www.cogmed.com and just look at it and see if it's something you want to do. Yeah, and then another one is Lumosity. That's cheaper, and you don't need a coach. That one's www.lum l u m o s i t y. So the Lumosity. other ones, you just do it on your own. The yep. CogMed one, you'll take, you'll, you walk through them. Yeah. I coach them through it. And so the, the big premise is I hope you use what you're using in real time and I help you put it into work. Uh, so a coach call I just had with the lady last Friday, we were using it basically on emotional management. Like, so I can see a pause now, like before it was like somebody react and I react. And now there's actually a, a stimulus space response. So I don't have to react so fast. And now they're starting to see options. And that's exactly what, what dopamine does. I didn't do it for that reason. We did it for other reasons, but you can see it. Okay. okay. So I would suggest this, start with one of the easy apps that oh. don't need a coach and in there. yep. And, and start with that. And if you like it and you're kind of good and let's say you accelerate pretty fast. Yeah. Then you'll need <laughs> me to help you through because yeah. you're probably pretty smart. You just haven't figured out the EIQ pieces. Okay. So um, that's the cognitive side, the last side and, and it, yes, exercise is the king. Exercise is the king, lowercase k, right? Jesus is Every the big work out. I'm gonna hit that. Yeah. Uh, okay, but here's what they, this is really cool. They, <laughs> it's movement and specifically functional movement. So if you can do movement that actually has movement tied to timing. So I haven't looked at this in a couple of years, but I do. You're trying I, to talk about like jazzercise? Yes. I'm talking about aerobics. Zumba. Yes. Yes. And yes. Funny. Yeah. You're certified in Zumba again. And and like things like dance. Okay. Now the best one that I looked at, I was probably a couple years ago, being honest, like I looked at it during COVID because I started doing a couple classes, just like, I mean, not classes. I mean, like I was watch, <laughs> watching stuff online, Tai Chi. And I got so excited huh. about it. I told Norma and Norma was like, I'm looking up Tai Chi. I'm looking at, okay. And the reason is Tai Chi is a lot of focused movement. Okay. With timing and a lot of balance. So that's, if you, if you're like, man, I can't work out. Like I, this dude's always talking about working out. Okay. But it's the biggest thing that levels up the big three, which heals almost all of the mental illnesses, like, um, that are not neurological based, like schizophrenia is not going to be changed because you work out, but so you get dopamine, you get serotonin, you get, I don't even know what Tai Chi is low key. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it, I want you to look it up because it's, it's I am. absolutely awesome. Like I low key, I want to get certified. Oh, this is not like movement <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Slow movement on one yeah. leg and you kind of balance. Yeah. It's I, like oh. I said, I did, a, I did a couple practice things during COVID cause it, you know, just like, dude, I got to figure this out. Oh, I have. Yeah. To. Lou yeah. has to record that. If I, if you're in the living room <laughs> doing some Tai Chi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I'm done. Yeah. I ain't lying. I'm, I, I'm not wild. lying. Tyler has a video where he's cooking hamburgers and he's like, my buns are burning like tai chi <laughs> will forever, burn though. your buns tai chi will burn your buns that is like a lot of spot. okay but All also right. also <laughs> timing movements here's another one what about ping pong what about pickleball what about tennis okay yep, yep. all of those are working because it's timing and movement so pickleball you, is just fat person tennis i promise you it'll help your working memory it'll help your dopamine you want to so see me in pickleball start anywhere because look let's let's say okay let's say i do tai chi and i do it for let's say six months and then i you know i burn out 
but I'm doing that multiple days a week. If somebody decides to go run like a half marathon and then just they're done, like I'll have them beat, right? Somebody goes to CrossFit and puts in six weeks, but I did the Tai Chi for six months. I'm winning. I want people to think about the long game, the long game, slow-mo, <laughs> slow-mo karate. Yeah. The long game. Like how long can I stay in this thing? Right, because something that's sustainable. It's sustainable because like, okay, in our warrior mindset stuff, we talked about the, the secret to failing fast and then you stack those habits over time. So let's listen to this. Like experts make stuff look simple, not because they're that great. It's because they practice that long. So a 10 step process, think about a Brazilian soccer player. I mean, even when you watch this stuff in slow mo, I still get a headache. Like right. when they stop the ball, switch it, switch foot, fake left, fake right, go between the legs, deep back, deep back again, and then boom, they're gone. And you watch it in real time. It looks like two moves. That's because they, it's habit reversal from like, I failed, go forward. I failed, go forward. I failed, go forward. And then the brain puts that together as two moves instead of 20. Okay. That's what happens when we develop the movement, right? So how do we, how do we increase dopamine, medication, nutrition, cognition, right? And then movement. <laughs> Let's go. If you remember one thing, uh, remember to move. <laughs> all right. We got a couple of, co okay. Number one. I don't know what this word is, but Esther threw it in there a while ago. Do you know what that is? I can't. I can't read. I, can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I couldn't see it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, you said ask, I, her, I ask her what it is. Well, she's on here, so yeah, Esther, if you could, that, if, you're, if you're still. I don't know what that is. Um, why she's doing that? I threw up Alicia, Mrs. Zumba. Slow motion karate is Tai Chi, according to Norma. Carly yeah. says, "Sounds like dance music to me." Yes. Um. Oh, mom said she's playing pickleball. Yes. Bridget had a great idea. She wants to play pickleball. So, hey. what if we? What if we just did a low key like a a, a renewing the mind podcast Saturday pickleball? We'll do it. We'll, we'll post it. Cameraman Nate's in. We'll Norm's in. She says, where I want to learn and play. The Sergeant Nate's Bluff, here. Sergeant Bluff, Dave uh, will be here on Saturday. Yes, the Sergeant Bluff tennis courts. So we can get... Well, isn't just, there... We're... Doesn't Riverside have a, a whole tennis court thing? Oh, Riverside I mean, a whole, has them. A, yes, a yes. pickleball actual thing? Yes, we'll do... Let's do Riverside. We'll, See, we'll drive out there. Look, we'll... we, we have to do pickleball because this is what my wife wants to do. I've been trying to get Tyler to go ballroom dancing. No, okay, okay. All <laughs> room dancing. Stop. Look what you caused. Look what you caused. Dude, I'm telling you, everyone's gonna be fire. We're gonna have we're gonna no, have like no, 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 because she's gonna be like, oh, it's for your working memory. And okay, yeah. So I promise you dopamine. When we, were, when we were in Iowa City, mom and I took um a salsa class. Terrence will be Stacey, there. Stacy Stacy fell in love with it. We need to do that again, honey. No, so let's no, we don't salsa class. Yes, we're gonna have a renew the mind salsa class. We're gonna how do, I can't how do I we can't go? Eat. Listen, how do we go from playing pickleball to ballroom dancing? That, I think that word uh, that Esther put up actually means ballroom dancing. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> we can also do it inside a United inside <laughs> so it's not so hot. In the United Center. Okay. All right. We're, oh, gonna we're, we're figuring this out. Yes. Don't want to see me in the we'll, we'll definitely post it on the Room to Mind page, maybe on YouTube. We'll get a lot of people there. <laughs> what, what? Uh, oh my goodness yeah here comes okay but what but let's let's figure this let's do this saturday why can't yeah. we just do this saturday i'm saying we'll wait this saturday Tape wife yeah. are we busy saturday this saturday let's do pickleball we'll have a pickleball i'm down thing. oh and then we could go to uh uh billy boys billy bobs what's the ice cream place the, with the onion rings <laughs> <laughs> Or, look, look, or look, we could get our we could get dopamine up and then we could celebrate because we got our dopamine up with some onion rings. Yeah. Or we could have Auntie Nana and we'll bring some tacos and hot sauce and guacamole. Nah, that's too much work. Oh I'm not there. Oh, here. Uh, um Esther th Esther threw it what it is. Difficulty in, in experiencing, expressing, and describing emotional responses. Hey. Oh, very good. So, yes. Yeah, so this is low and slow. Yep. So that, that there, there's like these things called feelings wheels. So you take one feeling and then you can draw out like how many emotions one feeling has when somebody's stuck. So you'd have to go super slow. I actually didn't know that word, Esther. Thank you. Um, difficulty in experiencing, expressing, and describing emotional responses. Okay, cool. Okay. We got a whole thing going on here. Okay. Look okay. at this. Look at this. Look at this. Norm's available Saturday. Yes. And then, and then we go to Choclons and uh ac throws down some carne asada tacos bro i'll bring you some hot sauce 
Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll bring, oh. How about this? I'll bring the hot sauce oh, and guac. Oh. I'll, I'll throw Wait, my I be, are we busy Saturday? Hot Why, sauce can and you guac. let me know? I'm, who, who's, a, who's, who's in? I, th- I think we're free Saturday. I got yeah. nothing on my calendar. Terrence and Tabor coming to town, so we're free. Terrence said he's not going to be here until uh, on Saturday. So let's definitely do it Saturday. What? I'm not there Saturday. Uh, okay. Um, okay. We're going to make this happen. Yeah. We'll throw it on the Renewing the Mind Facebook page for those of you that are in Sioux City and want to do it. For those of you who are not in Sioux City, yeah. I'm so sorry. I apologize. We'll and take I a picture. You, and we'll we're post. not experts. We're all just starting. I played <laughs> once in my life. It is super fun. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, if mom's coming, you definitely, you're good. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, I love you, babe. Don't let him do that to you. Don't you're let him okay. do that to you. <laughs> uh, so who's watching the baby so I can play? No, we'll just pass her wrong. It's third kid. We'll just lay her on the ground with a, yeah. a little blanket. You ain't worried about germs. You can sit in that court, court side. Yeah. Just, just sit court side. Just lay hands on her and pray. We're good. We got it. <laughs> no, she's fine. It's yeah. Right. We'll just put her right outside the fence in the yes. stroller. This is good. I like it. So oh, movement, Ros- movement, Rosario's movement. got the baby. All right, perfect. Oh, we got this all planned. It. I'm yeah. down with this. She's if certified. wait, when does Terrence come in town? Ah, we'll figure it out. All right, we'll yep. figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Any last questions? Any, no, that's it. It's all. It's all to pick a ball so we can increase our dopamine. Increase the dopamine, right? So all right, medicine. We got diet. We have the cognition, and then we have movement. Okay, perfect. That's that's the brain hack for us to increase dopamine so we can increase our feelings, expression and the ability to read other people's facial expressions when they're hurting so we can stand with them in their pain. Love that. Renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty and find what's awesome about that in every situation and never forget it. There's two times to be great when you feel like it. Oh, mom's going to kill me. Hold on. We got a drop. We have merch. Oh, we have we got mugs. We got mugs. We got um hold on you, hold on can you see that let me see yeah i just dropped there you yeah, go there you go okay. there you go that no, slide it back in general. it slid to your slide it to your left yep yeah there, there we, we go, go. Two, two times time. journal two times mug there it yeah, is Yeah. there we go there we go two times to be great and then the, like our old school, the original Renewing the Mind podcast mug. Yes. Um, we got the sweatshirts. Mom's book is on there, which we'll talk about here in, a, in a, maybe Ooh. next episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I clicked that link, buy the merch. And, uh, and my, our, book, my book came in. But it's not on there yet. Wait, wait. Should I show it right now or are we save it? No, no, no. We're saving oh, yeah, that. We're okay, you weren't okay. supposed to say anything. Oh, uh, oh, and then oh, twelve oh. Two, a 12 2 hat. So click that link and um, buy some merch. And we're, we're definitely not trying to get rich because that has given away more merch than we've ever sold. I already, so already gave some more today too. I just it's hard. It's, it's not for us to make money. It's it's more of a marketing piece. So take it. Yeah. People ask questions. Yeah. Rock with if you rock with us. Buy it's some my, of these it's things. My, it's my Cook Park mentality. I have five dollars. I'd buy all the twin beings at, at Cook Park pool, and I just hand them out. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> handing out mugs that we're supposed to be making money from. So it's, yeah. 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 It's fine. All right. Cool. Hey. Uh, renew your perspective, move towards uncertainty, find what's awesome about that in every situation. Never forget yeah. it. It's two times to be great when you feel like it, when you don't. We love y'all, and we'll see you in two weeks. I had to realize what's inside of me. For all of the people that lied to me. For all of the people that said I would fall off. Oh, but what a time to be alive. I wrote this for everyone, feel like they counted out. You need to look in the mirror and tell yourself it's time to be who I am now. Greatness.